Kim Stafford, and I'm here again with PIMCO Group CIO Dan Iveson to give you an inside look at some of the recent discussions taking place within PIMCO's Investment Committee, or IC. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Kim. For many investors, it's back to basics with respect to bonds, which have historically been known for income generation, capital preservation, um, and portfolio diversification. So can you talk about why you're excited today uh, about bonds, and what are the opportunities going forward given heightened yield levels? Sure, so to, to your point, values return to the fixed income markets. Uh, just thinking about nominal yields, um, and we'll, we'll start here in the United States. You know, across the yield curve now, you could lock in a very high quality bond yield today. Um, you could look for a very high quality uh, spread product and very, very easily put together a portfolio, you know, up in the six, six and a half percent type yield range without taking a lot of exposure to uh, economically sensitive assets. Much better than cash, but also pretty good versus equities. Um, so those that have been in cash looking for incremental return, fixed income's looking quite attractive. So we do think uh, it should be a call to action, these higher yield levels. On the flip side, if you're concerned about inflation, you can look at various inflation protected securities. Uh, and generate an inflation-adjusted return or a real yield uh, of greater than 1.5%, you know, even in some cases close to 2%. In fact, we haven't been back to those real yield levels since you know, really uh, the years leading up to the global financial crisis. So plenty of opportunity today, as you mentioned, but also still sources of volatility happening in financial markets. So maybe you can discuss the potential sources of volatility that you've been discussing and how PIMCO as an active manager is very well prepared to navigate this volatility. From a macroeconomic perspective, lots of uncertainty around the inflation dynamic. Uh, we and other forecasters uh, are of the mindset that inflation will trend lower but remain frustratingly high. We do think this will be a theme in 2023 as investors you begin to further appreciate uh, the potential trade-offs between central banks getting inflation back down towards target and the inevitable weakness that's going to cause um, on the economic front. Uh, with significant and elevated risks of a recession, which of course could have significant impact on the performance of economically sensitive assets, credit assets, equities uh, as well. And then plenty of uh, uncertainty from a geopolitical perspective, uh, significant uncertainty about politics, both global politics, national politics. And then last but not least, just relates to market structure. There's less transactional liquidity than there's been in the past. Markets are prone uh, to overshoot fundamentals, uh, particularly when there's a shift in activity. That can be a cost for those less prepared, but also a tremendous opportunity for active asset management. You mentioned you know, volatility is the friend to an active manager, but what are you doing to prepare portfolios to insulate against all the risks that you just described? Sure, well, first of all, liquidity. Um, you know, with good liquidity comes investment flexibility. Uh, we saw a situation you know, creep up on the market in terms of the volatility in the UK, uh, the resulting technical flows uh, across the LDI community. And a reminder again, it's critically important you know, to be sufficiently li liquid uh, because um, surprises can happen in markets. Um, good news is we've had a multi-year period um, you know, coming out of the COVID crisis of the first quarter of, in 2020. Uh, where there has been uh, sufficient time, uh, su sufficient accommodation from central banks uh, to get into a position of uh, more attractive or, or, or more uh, abundant liquidity. And that's been a key priority. Um, so in addition to having macro views, we're very, very focused on implementation and having that flexibility. Uh, over the course of the last several weeks, we've been able to put some of that liquidity to work because we have seen for selling. Having uh, appropriate initial conditions is an important prerequisite to be able to go on offense once uh, once valuations suggest uh, you're getting paid uh, to, do, to do that on behalf of investors. One question that continues to be top of mind for investors relates to opportunities across public and private markets, just given the valuation shifts that we've seen. So where are you seeing value today, and how should investors think about the balance of opportunities between markets? You know, public markets tend to reprice and, and, and tend to reprice very, very quickly. Uh, so you've seen you know, public markets uh, lead uh, in terms of prices going lower. And that's true of a fixed income instrument. It's true of other um, permanent capital type vehicles that trade on exchanges. So we think if you're putting money to work today, uh, or if you're thinking about putting money to work going into year end, uh, the public opportunity set does look more attractive today. But there's been a big stock of private issuance over the last decade or so. These markets have grown and they've grown significantly. Perhaps they've grown a little bit too quickly as a result of some uh, weakening in, in overall underwriting standards. 
So from an investor's perspective and looking to prepare for what could be a very attractive opportunity over the course of the next few years, we think allocations to private credit strategies, various other types of contingent capital strategies, uh, look as attractive as they've looked really since the years you know, leading up to the global financial crisis. So bottom line, public markets today prepare for opportunities in the private markets over the course of the next couple of years where we think that it's going to be a very, very target-rich environment, not just within corporate credit, but in real estate and other sectors and segments of the market that are being impacted by higher rates, uh, lower public equities, wider spreads. They're just reacting with a typical lag um, that you see um, in, in the stickier uh, private market opportunity set. Great. So what are the top things investors should keep in mind as we head into 2023? Well, um, one is that 2022 very well um, from a historical perspective could look like an exceptional year in terms of downside performance. Uh, there's better value back uh, in both fixed income and equity markets, and we think investors should be patient. Very hard to call you know, highs in yields, lows in prices, but with better valuations should be a year with um, less volatility and materially higher prospects for returns. So again, don't try to time things, be patient, uh, but begin to return to a market that increasingly offers very, very attractive value uh, from a historical perspective and a fundamental perspective as well. Great, well thanks very much, Dan. And thanks to all of you for joining us. We'll see you next time.